Welcome back to Well.com. My name is Jeff Ray, featured guest host here. On today's episode, we have a viewer's request of when is it necessary to fuse weld while TIG welding. So let's get at it. So on today's episode, we're gonna be asking ourselves, when is it necessary to fuse weld? So I'm gonna tell you what fuse welding is. Fuse welding is ontogenous welding. It's welding without using filler material. I'm gonna take you through a couple of different demonstrations on when to use fuse welding and when not to use fuse welding. We got some aluminum tubing here, some aluminum plate, some stainless steel tubing, and some titanium. I'm gonna tell you why I use fuse welding and when it's most practical to use it and when not to use it. So let's get at it. So first, we're gonna talk about the aluminum. We're gonna talk about when it's necessary to fuse weld on aluminum. We're gonna start with this aluminum sheet metal here and we're gonna tack it together. If you know when TIG welding, it requires both hands. You need one for the filler wire, one for the torch. Well. If I'm trying to fit this piece up, I can't always use filler wire at the same time. So that's when it's necessary to fuse weld. So we're gonna come over, get the machine turned on. Got argon. Jog the memory over to my AC settings here. Turn it up to about 110. We got the machine set on AC. We're gonna run high freak TIG with the foot pedal. Go ahead and get this piece tacked and show you what happens when you fuse weld aluminum. I'm gonna start off with a full lap here and then I'll do a corner to corner fit up as well. You can see how much heat it took to get that to fuse together, as well as it's very fragile. If I try to manipulate this piece really at all, it's gonna break. We'll do the same on this side. That side took a little better, but this stuff is not practical to be welded without filler. I will essentially only do this technique on aluminum when tacking, and now, We'll do a corner to corner fit up. It's a little bit harder. Now you can see it really takes away a lot of the material when fusing this stuff. Aluminum, as you're welding it, it's actually burning off a lot of that material. I've said before, when TIG welding aluminum, it's gonna utilize a lot more wire than if you're welding steel or stainless steel because it's burning all that material out of there. So even on my tacks, I have to go back over and add material in here. Put a couple of tacks there, because when I go to fire back up on this one, if I only got one, the piece might fall apart. And most of the time, I'll do a double tap. So I won't just put one weld, I'll put one dab, move forward a little bit, put another dab in there, because this stuff will crack and fall apart. I can literally just grab this side here and it breaks apart pretty easy. It didn't make for the best fit either, so it's not really practical to fuse weld aluminum. Only when tacking is when I do it. Other than that, the filler metal is required. So we got a couple of tacks made here with the uh, fuse welding. Now I'm gonna go ahead and weld this full lap joint out, only fusing this to show you that it's not really practical, but if you weld this thing inside and out, it could be strong enough to do whatever it is your application is. I don't really like running full lap because I usually wanna round that corner off. I don't like a weld on the corner like that. So that's where I like the corner to corner fit better, but we're gonna fuse this one. We're gonna give it a try and see, see what she does. Oh, 
Paul doesn't look that bad, but it's probably not the strongest. Like I said, there's a lot of material burning out of there when I'm welding it. That's why you go through so much wire when TIG welding aluminum. It's not practical, but it will work in situations. Like you want that edge rolled, but you don't want to build up a lot of material on there and worry about it penetrating and grinding it out and then having the lack of penetration there. That's one example on just the aluminum. Like I said, I only really use it for tacking purposes and then I go back with the filler wire and beef those tacks up. We also have the aluminum tubing, which can get kind of tricky because it is so thin and wants to pull apart. Well, we're gonna go ahead and make a tack on here. So I got a little tack on there. And usually when I'm doing this, I'm trying to fit this on a car or something like that. And just like that, the piece falls apart. So it's really hard for me to fit this up on a car, having to hold the piece, tack it, and grab a piece of wire and then tack the other side. It's just really not practical. Fuse welding aluminum. I'm gonna take you through a couple examples on titanium and stainless where it is applicable to use fusion welding or ontogenous welding on material when TIG welding. So let's get at it. We got our uh, machine turned to DC now. Got it set at 45 amps. Got our tungsten sharp, new cup on there for the tie. Now I'm gonna go into tacking this piece of titanium. You seen when I tacked the aluminum, uh, it didn't really hold that well. Not applicable to fuse the aluminum. Now I'm gonna show you just putting two little tacks on this titanium, how strong it actually is. It doesn't look like much, but you'll be surprised how strong these tacks are. Unlike the aluminum, this stuff is able to be fuse welded. You can tell just by the tacks being so strong. If I were to have to break this piece apart, I'd really have a time not destroying one of these pieces of pie cuts here. When fusing aluminum, it's not very applicable. On the titanium and stainless, it's more widely used. I'm gonna go ahead and get a piece of stainless set up here in a purge, and we're gonna do a walk of the cup weld on it, a fusion weld, or ontogenous weld, which is very widely used in the process industry. Uh, I've done this application for years and years. Uh, now on the turbo systems and stuff like that, I use a little bit of filler wire, but to show you that fusion welding is very applicable when welding and when it's necessary. So let's get at it. Now we're gonna make a weld on this piece of stainless steel two inch tubing here, 065 wall. This is a tri-clamp fitting, very widely used in the process industry. When we do this process, we always fuse weld these. But you gotta remember, this is a process line. We can't burn these tacks in too heavy. We do not want any sugar in them. So just a couple of light tacks before we get the purge going. Now, we'll get a purge on this thing, burn these tacks in there a little bit heavier, because when we go to weld on this, all that material burning together is gonna draw, and it's gonna wanna pop those tacks apart. Like I said, when fusing this stuff, there's not a lot of base metal there, and you can burn through and sugar it. So we're gonna go ahead and get the purge set up, get this thing welded out. We've had this piece purging out for a couple of minutes now. I'm gonna go ahead and burn these tacks in here a little heavier so it doesn't pull apart on us. So we got our stainless steel tubing weld made here on this two inch tri-clamp ferrule. This is very widely used when fusion welding or ontogenous welding in the process industry. 
I've used this application for years. Haven't really ever seen any welds break or fracture at all. In the titanium, I've done this as well. Like I said, just the tacks alone hold really well. That tells you that it is a very strong weld still. We have the aluminum pieces we did here. Not so applicable. Only when I'm trying to tack something and I can't use that other hand to throw filler wire in there. That's when I'm having to fuse the aluminum together as well as on the tubing here. It just makes it very hard when fitting this stuff because I can't use a third hand to do so. So these are some of the times when I do need to fuse weld stuff. When is it necessary? When's it necessary for you guys? Let us know in the comments down below. There's a number of different ways you can use fusion welding. And we'd love to hear it or if you'd like to see us try some other things, let us know. Thanks for watching. Until next time, you can head over to weld.com and get connected with us directly through the members section, as well as in the members forum, you can ask questions and our advisors would gladly help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.